Hey guys, back again. So let's do a pickups video. And I don't think I've done pickups in, I think, two or three months. I've bought a lot of stuff, but I just haven't really... And, and looking at the stuff that I've bought for this pickups video, like in the past couple months, you'll definitely see, because a lot of things that I bought are quickly, like we've seen so many videos of people unboxing and talking about it. But uh, let's get started with my pickups. And I like I said, I've got a lot. I'm going to start with, so I've got games and movies. The two games that I got um, for PS4 are Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory, which just came out a couple weeks ago. Uh, it's it's essentially pointless in storyline so far, but it's a fun rhythm game, especially because they've got incredible music for these games. And then uh, South Park, The Fractured Butthole. And uh, it also came with South Park, The Stick of Truth, which I played on PS3. Really great game. Um, I played a little bit of that more than the Fractured Butthole so far, but this one, I I am interested to see where it goes because I really did like the Stick of Truth on PS3, and I'll play through that first on PS4 and then play through the second one, the Fractured Butthole. So I try not to say that so many times, but it's just so weird to say. Um, but South Park, uh, that one is really fun so far. And now we go on to the movies, and I've got a million movies here so uh first off i got the invisible man legacy collection on blu-ray i have seen the first one and i've been watching the sequels to this and this is the only set that i don't have of the universal monster movie collections that universal put out um i've got all the other ones on dvd and this is on blu-ray so it's kind of weird to get just this one on blu-ray but it'll be fine sitting next to the other ones but uh i i'm enjoying some of these movies in the Invisible Man films and some of them I'm like oh, these are kind of boring but I like how interesting that they change up the franchise like the character an invisible character in each movie whether it's an invisible woman or it's an invisible agent uh during World War II like I like that they keep changing stuff up with it at least um and then again this shows how long it's been since done, since I've done a pickups video but the Psycho Steelbook Uncut Edition i uh, never seen the uncut version before. I guess it was a German version. Um, it adds a couple more shots of blood and uh, nudity in it. But it doesn't add much to the movie, which I didn't expect. But a steelbook's really cool looking. I really like it. So I've got two Psycho steelbooks. Um, and then let's go to one Vestron movie I got, which is Shivers. David Cronenberg's Shivers I watched for 31 Days of Horror. And this one is okay. It's not bad. It's pretty interesting, but it's not super interesting. <laughs> And that sounded really lame how I said that. But it, it's not that interesting, I don't think. I think the idea is cool. The execution could have been a little better. But it's still not bad. And it's a it's an old Cronenberg movie. I think it might be his first film. One of his first. It was, it was serviceable enough. But it wasn't something that I fully loved. Like, I thought it was fine. Um, and then, let's go to Arrow. Since Arrow, that is the second smallest amount I've got. Because Scream Factory is next. But with Arrow Video, um, this one I did not buy. This is from one of my patrons, one of my friends, John Kyle, uh, Madman. Um, I thought it would be not uh, American. Like, I thought it would be a different region. but it, And it shows that I thought it would be. But it plays in American Players on my PS4. Uh, Madman is really, really fun. I enjoy it. And I've seen it probably four or five times now. And I do like it more and more each time I watch it. It's really entertaining. And then uh, I bought Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. Have never seen this before. Elvira, if if you saw my review on it, Elvira is not something that I grew up with. I just know who she is because, of course, people do know who Elvira is. And I watched this movie, and I really did enjoy it. And I thought it was actually really fun. But sometimes it didn't feel completely like a movie. It just felt like a lot of just jokes, which was fine. But it just it didn't feel like a full film in some points. Um, and then I got Franken Lauder's Brain Damage. Um, really cool inside cover as well um i really like this one a lot this one's really fun and frank and lauder is, is awesome um i'm trying to watch all his movies i've seen a, good, a couple of them but i enjoy them and then on to scream factory and the first scream factory i got was Pumpkinhead. uh really fun movie the steelbook's really cool i just had to get it for the steelbook i didn't own the original version on blu-ray of it and then The Fog, I've never owned the Blu-ray for this. I do have that crappy two-pack Scream Factory of The Fog and The Howling, and it has no special features, so of course I had to buy this with special features because I want to listen to the commentaries on these movies. So I got this for cheap. Um, I enjoy. I think The Fog, I rewatched this today. I think it's just, it's okay. 
it's got some good effective moments and John Carpenter's direct directing is good and Adrian Barbeau is good and uh, all the other people like Jamie Lee Curtis, Janet Lee, Tom Atkins, they're all good. But the movie just kind of falls flat and just being not that interesting to me. Like I just I'm not super invested in in the fog. Like I think it's for in terms of like a film, like it's fine, but it's just not one of my favorites. Like it's definitely not Carpenter's best, but I think it's fine. And then uh, Scream Factory continuing on, Terror in the Isles, um, really awesome. I used to own the Halloween 2 Blu-ray with this in it, but now I just own this one because Terror in the Isles is great. I watched it as a kid on TV, um, and then I watched the Blu-ray a lot on the Halloween 2 Blu-ray that I had, and now I finally got the real version uh, with a commentary, which was good. Um, and then Toby Hooper's The Fun House, I own this on DVD, so I had to upgrade. I haven't... I haven't really thought much different about this one since I watched this. This, like The Fog, is another movie from our director that I really like, but it's just a movie that's whatever. Like, I think that I like The Fun House a little bit more than The Fog, just by a little bit. But I don't think it's that great. Like, I think that it's it's creepy and eerie like The Fog is, but it just doesn't have something that makes me go back to it every time. Um, it's fine, like, directing-wise, it's fine, but, like, it's just not something I go back to but much, but I did rewatch it with commentary, uh, by Toby Hooper, and I did think it was alright, it's just not anything, again, that I love. And here's the Scream Factory that I bought, another to Toby Hooper movie. This is a movie that I watched and really didn't like that much, uh, The Mangler, with Robert England. This was really terrible, and not entertaining in a way where I was, where I had fun, like, I didn't think it was that entertaining, besides a couple, like, moments of the movie it really wasn't that entertaining or fun or really memorable to me like it's really lame um i'm not mad that i bought it i like to collect the screen factories but this one was just really like really just low-key not that good in my opinion um and then i got 13 ghost 13 ghosts never seen before uh this one and i've never seen it before and i've always remembered the artwork uh this artwork right here the face like whenever i went to like stores whenever i was a kid and I always thought it was creepy. And I watched this movie for the first time with this release. And it's interesting. It's fascinating. It's one of those 2000s dark castle movies where they were remaking all these classic like haunted house movies. Um, or just creepy movies like this or Ghost Ship um, or House on Haunted Hill. Like it, it, it was very, it's very similar to that where it's like modern day 2000s style CG but it's got some good moments in it. Like, I think it's fun. Um, it's not terrible. It's it's just really, really weird. Like, it's a very weirdly made movie because it's it's really harshly stuck in its own time frame in the 2000s, whenever this came out. I think this came out in 2001. Yeah, 2001. This is so stuck in 2001. If you watch this movie now and in HD, you're just like, what? Like, but that makes it somewhat entertaining. Like, I didn't dislike this one. I thought it was fun. Um, and then, speaking of House on Haunted Hill, I got the House on Haunted Hill uh, remake. I've seen the original. I remember liking it all right. Um, this one, this one's weird because 13 Ghosts, I liked a little bit more, even though it's kind of hypocritical to say that because these movies are both really similar. They're both 2000s, um, 2000s movies that are really stuck in their time frame. Well, I guess this is 99, but still, they're stuck in their, in their time frame. Like, they've got really weird, bad CG um, but I felt like 13 Ghosts was more interesting. This one wasn't bad, but it was just really not, I don't know. The only thing I remember about it is that, uh, Jeffrey Rush is in it and he looks just like Vincent Price. Um, I thought that was funny, but I, I don't know. I don't remember this one, honestly, after rewatching it. I think I watched it like a week or two ago and I've kind of already forgotten about it. <laughs> um, and it had Ali Larder in it and Fom, Fom Jensen, however you say her name, Jean Grey on X-Men. Um, but I thought it was, I thought it was all right. It wasn't good. It wasn't that good, but it was okay. And, uh, the last pickup I got, you can really tell that I haven't done a, done a pickups video in a while because this came out a couple months ago and I'm really excited to say that I got the Friday the 13th, uh, box set from Screen Factory. Of course, it's freaking great. Um, a lot of the issues that people have like disc problems, like I've heard them and then I don't really see the problems whenever I watch them on my discs. Maybe I've got good ones, but um, this is just an incredible box set, just like the Halloween box set. I'm so glad that we have this, and I really want to have a Nightmare on Elm Street and a Chucky box set from Scream Factory, because this one does everything, like, it's perfect. It, it really is to me. And like I said, I haven't had any real issues with the 
with like the discs where people have had issues but i really really dig this box set it's one of my favorites that i've got now just like the halloween box set it's so sacred for me to just have on that shelf and of course if you look behind me the shelf's being reorganized because i just have had a weird kind of moment in life where there's things that i'm just kind of getting rid of right now like and i usually don't get rid of movies but there's some movies that i've gotten rid of mostly not horror that i just won't rewatch again that i just kind of had here and collected dust so i'm kind of reworking the shelf back there but uh but that's all my pickups video like i said the winner probably is the friday or is definitely the friday box set like it's really really incredible i've watched them all again um besides the remake because the remake had no new special features and i'm not really a fan of the remake honestly like i mean it's okay um i rewatched freddy versus jason but that and that didn't have any special features but at least i could listen to a commentary like if the friday 2009 had a commentary i would be more interested to rewatch it because i'm not really a fan of the remake but i rewatched every one of them except for the remake in this box set and the, they're just the exact same discs that New Line Cinema has released for the for the Friday remake and Freddy vs. Jason. So there's no new special features on either. So I guess it's fine that I haven't rewatched those. But all the other ones, I've rewatched a lot of the special features, rewatched and listened to new commentaries, just rewatched the movies. Um, love the box set for Friday the 13th. It's so incredible. And like I said, the artwork just alone is super incredible. It, it's just so awesome. And I've got the poster, both of the posters that came with the pre-order, so I'm glad I got that as well. But uh, that is it on my pickups video. Like I said, it's been a while. Uh, tell me if you guys have been picking stuff up down below. And uh, I'll talk to you guys later.